Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here for uh, Payson City Council meeting uh, January 19th, 2022, and it's six o'clock. Uh, I've signed myself the prayer and, and ask uh, Council uh, Bob Proscard to lead us in the pledge. So I'll go ahead and, and do the prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we come before thee this time, we are so thankful for the many blessings that thou hast given to us and for the privilege that we have to serve our community as mayor and, and uh, city council. We're thankful for those staff that uh, and employees that are uh, there to help us carry out the, the business of the city. Please bless us with more moisture as we continue to need uh, moisture for the coming year. And bless us that we may together with this, the city citizens uh, make good decisions uh, for the future. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please rise and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on to B, uh, consent agenda, approval of the January 5th, 2022 City Council minutes. Unless there's any discussion of the uh, agenda, the consent agenda, I'll, I'll accept a motion. Mayor, I would make a motion that we approve the consent agenda uh, and approve the council uh, minutes dated January 5th, 2022. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 And motion carries. Hey, Kim, is Kim there? Yes. I I can't. I can only see your picture. <laughs> oh, the council chambers isn't live. We will wait momentarily to get it live. Oh, there it went. Okay. There it went. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Well, it's not quite live. There's a little delay there, but there we go. Okay, we'll move on to see petitions. Uh, public forum, anyone can speak on uh, items not on the agenda. Uh, please try to limit your comments to three minutes or less, and we'll go to that point. Anybody would like to address this in the public forum? No one here in the, the council chambers appears. Uh, can we have anybody on line? Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, close that public forum and go on to staff reports. Hey, Chief. Johnny on the spot here. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, have you all noticed the uh, uh, testing site out at uh, Wasatch Mental Health um, has been quite backed up the last couple, couple of weeks? Um, in working with Carl and the health department and Dave, we're going to move that to the ballparks. When... <laughs> <laughs> Not only is she late, but she interrupts. Thanks, Janine. <laughs> Welcome to council meeting. Um, we're going to move that uh, to the ballpark swimming pool, the new ballpark and the swimming pool parking lot combined. Um, I've asked them to use 800 South for the vehicles to come into the parking lot and then they'll, we'll make a couple lanes and they'll, uh, you know, make their way and the, the, the actual testing site will be at basically at the entrance of the swim pool. That way, when they come out, they can go either way to get back through town. So that will start on, on the 24th of this month and then run approximately eight or nine weeks, depending on how Carl's, uh, recreation program. Well, once he gets started up for softball, we'll have to give them a, a little, uh, you know, two week notice to, to boot them out of there, but uh, It'll just all be gone by then, Brad. Well, <laughs> hopefully it will. Well, I, I appreciate you moving that. I've almost died a couple of times out there. Yeah, you, you know, come David, to a I complete about stop it. at freeway speeds almost. I mean, 55 yeah, David and I fast. talked about it about two weeks ago and I'm like, it's not too bad. Well, soon after that, it got pretty bad. So anyway, that's our plan. And if there's any problems, we'll look at another location. But for now, I, I think we've just helped them out a little bit and uh, they're not be able to service some of their patients right now because they can't get cars in there, but uh, we'll get that figured out. So um, I don't think I have anything else unless you have something for me. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Any 
Any other staff? Okay, not seeing any, we'll move on to council reports, starting with council probes card. Uh, the only thing I have is that uh, the mayor and I and Dave uh, attended the, the, the legislators or the city council day with the legislature and Senate up at the Capitol and Salt Palace today. You might need to change mic on. Oh, I didn't think anybody would ever have a hard time hearing me. <laughs> the ones online can't hear. Okay. Uh, anyway, we, I enjoyed the day. Uh, the, the governor was having a press conference on the, the state has uh, been commissioned now to create a new flag that updates and is all inclusive. <clears throat> and we attended that, that news conference and it was very well attended by by the public, yep. there's a lot of diversity there. I uh, I think the people that are putting this together are going to have a great challenge to meet all the all the different diverse uh, wants on the flag. So that'll be interesting in the days coming. Uh, I toured the I toured the Senate and the uh, legislature the yeah our representatives chambers in the 90s, and we toured it again today. Uh, Dave and, and the mayor and I actually got to go down on the floor and uh, about the only thing that has changed is that we have a lot stronger voice as Pace and City, as advocates in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. And so I'm excited to have those we, we intended on being there for a presentation this morning early uh, by our wonderful uh, folks that are ready to build, MTech that are ready to build, hoping to get funding. They actually moved them up an hour ahead of their scheduled time today. And so, so we, really. we missed it, but we were able to meet with President Christensen and his, his group. Uh, and they felt like the presentation went very well. And then throughout the day, we met with some of the representatives and the senators and those that were on the that were in the presentation said that it was very well received and very positive. So I, I'm just excited to see a shovel go in the ground, and and so I think we're just this close to being able to turn them loose and let them start building. So that's all I have, other than staff. Thanks a million. I was at the landfill the other day. Uh, I know it was a muddy mess, and they were trying to make the best of it, keep it scooped up. But I, I would once again, if somebody would please let them know how much we appreciate, that's the cleanest the landfill's ever been. They just are keeping it clean. Uh, our neighbors to the north love us right now. So just thank staff for everything they do, David. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. So I don't forget, uh, Council Hyatt, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I see our guys out there picking trash up on the way out to the dump on a constant basis. I appreciate that because I drive out there every day. So I know Kent's not there some of the times, so he can't let his guys know, but I totally agree with you that we need to let them know that they do an awesome job. And I have heard from the neighbors up there that they have been keeping it really clean. So yeah, kudos. Kudos to all of our employees. They do a great job. Um, haven't been out, still sick. So you guys just keep it running. <laughs> okay, thank you. Council Hewlett. I don't have anything, Mayor, thank you. Okay, moving on to Council Carter. I don't have anything either that I really need to talk about other than um, I appreciate the city staff and all that they do. Um, we, what did we do? <laughs> I forgot. Well, we did it well. We did it well. <laughs> yeah, what did we, did we do? Well. We did it well. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you were there. <laughs> um. Was it the Cowboys? Oh, no, no, no. You, the Cowboys were good. The Cowboys, you did good. That was wonderful. You even sang well. We did. Yeah. <laughs> that was 
Yeah, a hometown <laughs> heroes uh, event yeah. up the high school. Yeah, that was good. But I was thinking of the chamber banquet. Oh, oh uh, yes. There you go. It came to me finally. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was a nice night. It was good. And, and uh, we're extremely thankful for the Chamber of Commerce and, and for the work that they do. So I can't think of anything else. Um, other than I just appreciate the staff and all the hours that they put in. At the chamber event, we had Lieutenant Governor Henderson uh, come and speak with us. Very nice to have her there and, and share her thoughts with us. Council Christensen. Yes, that was a very good, good meal. It's nice to have the Clarion here in town and to provide those kind of services. Um, just a shout out to the Parks Department. Um, Recently, I, I went and bought myself a mountain bike. I know that's a shocker for some of you, but so we've been out riding and we came up on a tree and my kid went to swerve around the tree and fell off the sidewalk. And so I called the parks department and complained about the tree. And he says that wasn't their department, but they went ahead and went in and removed it anyway so that they could clear that out. And I just think that we need to, to be watching our sidewalks. Um, I know that I, it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse and that's because it's never been revived to the point I'm happy with, but um, just love to see more sidewalks, widen them, make them usable, um, but as well, clean up the ones we've got, you know, let's, let's just try to, to find those spots and I know it might be slowing out, might not be, I don't know what the roads department's doing, but if we can get out there and maybe police those, um, get down through there, uh, I think that's about all. It's been nice. I've gotten up into the mountains a couple of times. It's good to see Four Bay getting used. Um, I, I had the wonderful opportunity to go freeze myself overnight with the scouts, you know, but um, it was coming down off there. There were snowmobilers and everybody headed up into the mountains. And, and we really do have a, a gateway to adventure up there. And um, the bikers, some people were crazy enough. They were headed off with their snowshoes and ice spikes to go for a walk. And I'm like, oh, more power to you. Um, but it, it is good to see us using all that. We need to, to be policing it and doing what we need to, to make sure that it's used properly and, and rules are posted and things like that. So, but shout out to staff. They do a great job. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, D, action items, uh, public hearing slash resolution, amendments to the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Kathy? Or Dave, whichever. <laughs> we'll tag team. Mayor Council, we have some... Um, Budget adjustments, I think you've received some emails with the updated budget items, but uh, I'll just go through each one of those uh, for, your, uh, for your information for those that are in attendance, and then, um, then we can open up for a public hearing. Is this the accurate one? The one that was... Okay. So... Um, just... If you go on the second page, it has on the right side, it's one through 22. That's, and then the back page is just uh, an explanation of what it is. So the first one is uh, we're, we're asking for some additional budget amount for the janitorial services here to, to step up the, the cleaning service that we have been having um, just to make it nicer. Um, Number two, that's that's for sixteen thousand. We have additional costs from the Christmas decorations that we talked about that were rehabilitated. The, I thought they really looked nice this yeah, year. Yeah. They they're received a lot of comments. Bright about lights. It. They're they're nicer, but it did cost more than we we had budgeted. So this. You think that was low work. The garland definitely needs to be upgraded because it, it sparkled like it was supposed to. It looked yeah. sixty years old. So it it did look good, but it, it, it was money. Yeah. And so there's a, an amount there for twenty seven thousand. Um, we we do have the final uh, estimated budgets for the Hidden Cove Park and the Hancock Trail. It did come out more. Everything costs more these days. 
So we're asking for uh, 150,000 appropriation, but it, it is out to bid. It may come in less than what the engineer's estimate. Uh, Travis, that has been put out on SideQuest, right? The, yeah. the trail. It might come in less. It might come in more. It might come in more. <laughs> uh, it's a crapshoot, yep. We had budgeted 700,000 for the trail and the park and the engineer's estimate was just over 800. So this is a, gives a little wiggle room, but um, that's for the, the Hidden Cove Park. Um, number four, we're-, we're we, Dave, could I mention we've been planning out for 15, at least 15 years. So it's, it's money well- Yeah, and we've used uh, impact fees for a good portion of it. We've got some park tax uh, money that was appropriated for that. So most of it's, either by impact fees or the park tax. Uh, it's just this extra part that may or may not come in higher. We, 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 we estimate it probably will because everything's coming in higher. Um, number four, we've, we've uh, trued up all the expenses from the, the golf tournament and the, and, and the revenues we have. So we, we have left uh, 25,456. We're gonna move that into its own account so that we can track that for next year's golf tournament and, and just, we've, we've done fairly well the last couple of uh, years on that golf tournament. We're getting a lot of interest. It's a great tournament and it's helped uh, uh, bring in some revenue for economic yeah. development. Um, number five is the insurance check that we received from the, for our insurance company, 257,377 uh, for the, the damage to the generator down at the power plant. Uh, they are planning on uh, covering that cost. This was the first check. Once we get the, the actual cost, we can submit receipts and we should get reimbursed for that. So this is just to account for the check that we did receive from the insurance company. Um, number six is a grounds trailer. It's, a, it's an older trailer. They, they carry some of their equipment on. It's been repaired so many times it can't be repaired. So we're, bud we're asking for a $12,000 budget uh, adjustment to get a new trailer to, to help the parks department and the grounds. Uh, number seven, there's increased revenue that's been, um, been raised to, to replace the football helmets for the recreation program. Number eight, uh, we, 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 we work on these uh, vehicles that we use and then we can uh, resell those and it's kind of like a wash so we did we're able to sell one of the vehicles an f-350 uh, for the power department and replace it's sixty five thousand dollars is what the sale there was um the 2021 municipal recreation grant i don't know if you've all seen the uh the, the new the bandstand down at park it looks great doesn't it yes. and uh, that's I, I think kathy is that revenue that came we got reimbursed from the county. Yeah. So that paid for most of that. It, it was a great project to get done. Um, the, the mini X that the water department uh, purchased came in higher than what, what was budgeted. So they're asking for an additional amount of money for the, to help pay for the mini X. Um, number 11, um, the, the engineering services that we've had and the engineer that we hired was in the development services budget. It's being moved over into the engineer's budget. So that's just a transfer from one budget to the next. From planning to... Yeah, from planning over into the engineers. Um, number 12, we've, we've been working on getting easements for uh, the power to get out to the golf course. Uh, part of the easement on, on some of the property up close to the golf course um, also included a water easement. And so while, we, while we had that, having that open, um, we thought we put the, to, to run some power lines there, we would also put a water line in so that it gets us closer to with that well to get water down into the, the goose nest area. So while it was open, we thought it'd be good to, to purchase that pipe, uh, 60,000 and to get that installed when it's opened up. Um, we did have to repair, um, the golf course, um, uh, pump the, at the well, 
that was not budgeted for or anticipated. That's a $40,000 cost. Um, the water tender, uh, Scott and the fire has been budgeting for that for the last couple of years. It went out to bid and with all the supply chain and stuff, it came in higher. And the actual company that was starting the work, they, they canceled all bids. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a supply chain thing. So we had to re, reopen, but that's the additional amount to get that water tender. They have most, and that's, that's just uh, the increase. It's everything's coming in more expensive, but that, that water tender has been planned to be purchased. Uh, some of that came from fire money and different things like that. Um, the community theater, they uh, raised more money than they anticipated with expense, uh, with uh, the revenues of the show and, and donations. So they're asking that that be appropriated into their budget so they can use that for next year's show and other expenses that the community theater may have. It's, it's their revenue that they raised, 23,850. Um, we, we repaired half of the city roof. Um, with the with the budgeted amount, it came in seven thousand dollars higher than than uh, what they had budgeted for. So they're asking that that be um, increased so that we can get that paid for. Um, this number seventeen is the the uh, the tax incentive that we had entered into with Paris RV. That uh, that revenue has been paid and it's, it's just we're expensing it into the general fund and that will be paid out to them pursuant to the contract that we have and they paid their property tax so that portion will be reimbursed to them and then uh, the the sales tax that comes in will account for that um, number 18 is a, uh, the, the the cost for the generator uh, rebuild at the power department. This, this is increased money. They need to get that paid for, but we submit that to the insurance and they should reimburse us for that. So that should be a wash there. Um, number 19, the, the donations we received for the, the Casey field, uh, uh, event that we had the city budgeted originally $9,000 for that statue. Uh, we were going to get donations for the other half. It was 18, a little, just a little bit over $18,000. Um, we're budgeting the other 9,500 to pay all the cost. Um, we have received, uh, about seven, I, I wrote it down. I'm not going to have the right one. We haven't, we had, we didn't get donations for all of the amount, but we were about 70, $7,450. So we're about, uh, $2,050 short, uh, to totally pay that with the donations on the other half. So, and I know the mayor's still talking to people that said they would donate. So we're still looking at that. Still but looking we, at that. we thought we'd appropriate the money to get him paid, yeah. which we've submitted to pay the, the sculptor. Yeah. And then we'll keep Jeff. trying to get the money to, to cover that portion. Um, the RDA, uh, and, and we have to go into RDA later in the, the, uh, the meeting because there is an RDA amount. Um, we are trying to put um, a trail through the business park as development comes. So as, as the developer comes and does his part of the sidewalk, we have to pay our portion to widen that an extra five feet. So we have a 10 foot, so that it includes a trail and a sidewalk. And we do that as, as development happens. So there's a developer there that's starting to break ground. And so our portion of that frontage of his property is 12,900. And we can take that out of the RDA funds. We'll deal with that at the RDA public hearing, but just to explain what that is. Um, Kathy, you might need to help me on 21, the additional cost of the skid steer through grant. Is Is that through the fire? Okay. So they did receive some grant money, but there's, there's additional funds needed to pay for that skid steer. And then the, the last portion is just some funds that we did not uh, uh, 
budget for it's for the council retreat this weekend. It's it's not going to cost as much as on here's the sixteen hundred because we we pared it down. So whatever we don't use will be will fall to fund balance. But um, those are all of the um, budget adjustments we're asking the council for. Uh, we'll entertain questions, um, and we do have have to open it up for a public hearing. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the, uh, I'll get, accept the motion for the public hearing and we'll have some comments after the public hearing from the council. So I'm open for a motion. I'll make a motion that we open a public hearing in regards to the amendments to the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Good, motion carries. <laughs> Brian and council. Yeah. Brian? Yes. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Okay. We'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, please stick to the mic. Uh, if you have something to address us with, state your name and speak clearly. And again, try to limit your uh, uh, time to about three minutes or less. And please let us know if you agree or disagree uh, with the previous com uh, comments. And uh, please uh, don't state new information and in and please don't repeat. So we'll go ahead. Not seeing anyone that's getting ready to come up. Uh, I'll check with Kim, anybody online? Okay, I'll accept a motion to close the public hearing. I would make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second that. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor to close, say aye. Yes. 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 Or yes, or yes works. Okay, council discussion. We have any discussion that we'd like to hear. Just one quick question. I'm just a little confused. So things in parentheses is outgoing money and non parentheses items or incoming money, which credit. I can't tell if I'm looking at negative <laughs> balances or positive balances here. The parentheses are credits. Are credits, but he's, so the 257,000 from the improvements to the power plant, is that? But we've already spent the money. So that's my outgoing money. Okay. Well, that's what I thought it was. And then I got confused. So I thought rather than make an assumption, I would just clarify. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? If not, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll accept the motion on the item. I guess I had a little more discussion. Oh, go, go, okay. go, go. Yes. I'm, I, I'm just, you know, we're, we're, in the dead of winter right now and so air conditioning isn't what we talk about but i think it is a time to talk about are are we in good enough shape dave with with some credits and revenues that we could discuss some air conditioning here for this for the staff we are going to have to address that up up top i think the sooner the better yeah you know we and um, yeah yeah we can get that ready for the for the, Put new that budget. On the next agenda item that we um, could discuss and We did have some money in the budget when we when we approved it, but didn't didn't we already spend it on some stopgap fix? We, we spent some. It was a, an amount to with some portable units, and I, I I think we need to address it sooner than later. So get that on one of the next agendas that we can, because I don't want to see staff go through what we went through last year. Yeah, we'll we'll have a, another budget adjustment in a couple of months. And um, I know we need to talk about that part of the retreat. We're going to talk about the building, other buildings and things like that. So maybe we'll have some other direction, but yeah, it, it needs to be addressed. <coughs> and I, Kathy, do you remember if, uh, did Steve have a budget for that or a, a estimate to fix that? We'll get with Steve um, and find out if he's what his plan is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm good. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, uh, we'll go. I'll accept a, a motion on the item. Me. Thank you, Mayor. I would make a motion that we approve the budget adjustments 
one through 22 with a total of 909,539, $909,539. Okay, we have I a will second. second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Start roll call with Council Hewlett. Aye, uh, yes. Council Hyatt. Council Hyatt, you hear that? Are you? Oh, sorry, I thought I muted it, yes. Okay, Council Proscard. Aye. Council Carter? Yes. Council Christensen? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Go on to number two resolution, um, library board appointments. We have someone from the library. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Hello, council. Thanks for having us. I'm Brittany Johnson. I'm representing Ann Humphrey. She couldn't be here tonight. Well, and Jennifer couldn't either. But just to inform you first, we had our elections and Ann Humphreys will continue being president for the library board this coming year. I will be the vice president and Emily Edmond is going to be our secretary. She will be a great asset. We're excited. We just wanted to thank Rebecca Billings. She's been serving on the board for a long time and she's uh, gonna be leaving us. But to replace her is Jen Hinton, which you guys might recognize her name. She's been, uh, well, I'll read it so I don't forget something. She's lived in Payson for the last 20 years. She loves raising her family of four daughters in this community. She's been a longtime patron of the Payson Library and has thoroughly enjoyed bringing her girls there for many years. It was during story time session 19 years ago that she learned that a position for story time was available. She applied and got the job, which led to 12 years of leading story time, expanding the children's programs offered at the library and organizing and decorating the story time room in the basement of the library. She has a love for the Payson Library and instilling a love of reading and literacy in children starting from a young age. She's carried this love of learning and reading into her current job at Parkview Elementary as a reading technician. And she's very excited for this opportunity to once again be involved with the library. And we're excited to have her. She's gonna be a great asset. She wasn't able to be here tonight. Oh, I didn't see you sneak in. I'm sorry. My apologies, Jen, you wanna come up here? Come on up. I thought I'd look behind me. <laughs> So yeah, so this is Jen. Is there anything you wanted to add? No, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we're excited to have her. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Wonderful. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Before you sit down, please uh, accept our thanks for what you do at the library. Uh, yeah, and uh, Linda had asked me to, for a message to bring to you, and, and I'll repeat what I told her. We are actively looking for uh, to build a new library. We need one. We've never had one. It's still, it's still a thought process, but we're not going to let it go. We appreciate it. We don't feel like we've been forgotten. We feel like it. you guys are doing great, and we feel like we're moving forward. I, I was privileged to go up and uh, talk to, and read a story to the kids, uh, letter M for mayor, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, council discussion. Any to be had? Okay, we'll move on to a motion then. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve uh, Jennifer Hinton as the two be a three year term at the library board. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll start roll call vote. Car Council Christensen? Aye. Council Carter? Aye. Council Proskar? Aye. Council Hyatt? Aye. Council Hewlett? Yes. Okay, good. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> What's that? Linda. Linda. Linda, yeah. Okay, moving on to number three, review of Petitney Museum restroom remodel. Janine, do you have an architect with you? It shows architect. Brad, I think Janine's gonna need some help up here. <laughs> As a deterrent. <laughs> Your turn, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. He'll get me back. I know. We tease, we all tease each other. I just should have probably not done it in front of the city council. That's good. So I apologize, Chief. I know. You. <laughs> um, first of all, I've never done this part before, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, Dave was kind enough to text me coming in saying, you're not going to get all that money tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> anyway, so I, I knew it all this. So um, I do, Kim, if you don't mind showing the now pictures. 
Sorry, I should have given you. So we just feel like at the museum, which I think each one of you have taken a tour of our bathrooms. Um, you know, we have a lot of new events there now. Um, as you drive by that building, the parking lot is always full. Um, we have dance classes, numerous dance classes. We have many activities, um, you know, different groups meeting there, scout groups, um, homeschool PE groups meet there. We have um, different groups come in the meeting in the evening. So it's really time that we upgrade these bathrooms. So we're just going to shoot some slides of this is the women's restroom. Um, Kyle and Daniel and Steve work on these all the time to try to keep them from not leaking. I mean, they're constantly it doesn't it's a weekly thing is trying to keep those things so they Besides don't that, you have to be a midget to use them. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. You said it may or not be. <laughs> Do you have those more? Is that it? Keep going. What's that? Were those bidets? Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is looking in the male's restroom since I don't go in the male's restroom. No, I'm kidding. Do we have one there? Curtain. Yes, we <laughs> want to shoot this. Thing. Okay. There There's the shower curtain. That you that is for our handicapped. I mean, you can't get more embarrassing than that. No. So that's just horrible. I don't go back. I have to show you the tissue. See the tissue in the door? Yeah. I mean, that's so no one peeks in while you're going. See, it's just, it's a mess. And if you can keep the door on the latch while you're going, though, if you can get out after if you shut the door is a problem also. So we need help is what I'm saying. Yeah. So are, we have more pictures. Yeah, there's the leaky. So, oh, there you go. Yeah. Very inviting if you're in a wheelchair to try to, it's anyway. It's time. It's time. It is. Time. All right. So I have, um, so I've had some great, I have a, the architect Lester. What is Lester? Lester, what, is he on? Yes. yes ben we also. All, you know Lester, I think from other, um, working with him. Um, so he's been kind enough. The people preserving Petit need paid for his services. He's, we've already paid for him creating this. Um, on the people preserving Petit Neat side, we wanna move forward as soon as we can. So we've already paid for him to do this service for us. Um, Tom DeGraw, also the plumbing and air and all that part is in here. Um, seeing my sweet volunteers on the back there supporting yes. us. So that's great. Bill, Linda, and Colleen. So um, we just work with, you know, even that side, they're a great group of people. We couldn't do the museum without them. So it's just time. Um, and I know I'm not supposed to ask for the money now, so I'm not sure what to do. Can we, what do I ask? I need this money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm what? not sure how to make that happen next. What do I do? No. <laughs> yes. So yes, they, they've, you've seen your copies already. So the guest estimate, I like that word because from a past what Dave said, it could be higher, could be lower. The guess estimate is around $252,000. So I think we have that in the Christmas budget. Just kidding. Sorry. Happy. We can't Jeff, Jeff laughed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm just not sure where this goes next. So I'm proposing that if, so my intent is as soon as, so when I've looked at grants to apply for a 50-50 match, I have, they want to know that I already have support of this amount of money. And then once I know that that's secure, then I can then apply for the grant and they'll match half of it. So I'm, that's my, that's my So plan. potentially we could be on, on, on the tap for 150,000 yes, roughly. Correct, correct. But they wanna know that we're willing to pay the 250 now yeah. right but, but so, if we're willing they will pony up half sounds like yeah so i'm if i if that if i can apply for that grant i have to go receive the grant so i'm hoping anyway so yes okay so yes well i don't i don't know honestly i i can't imagine that we can continue to 
have this as a public facility right. with it the way it is. Correct. I'd almost feel less embarrassed to have uh, blue porta potties outside than <laughs> to send people into those. They could just bathrooms. walk. They could just Correct. walk down to Colleen's house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, if that's an option. That's way roll cheaper. Down the, roll down the hill. <laughs> Problem is, time I got there, it'd be too late. There'd already be, be a problem. <laughs> I've been a big so proponent. So, so I'm just Brian's not sure the next ahead. step is to. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, I've been a big proponent of having good bathrooms. I saw a survey once that that's the first thing people look at to judge if they when they go into a business or to a city or anything. That's how they judge you is by the bathrooms. That's why I was a proponent of getting the bathrooms fixed in the city center there and also up to the golf course. So, yes, let's. Um, Let's work on that. But I do have a question. Is there a grant that that's, is that large for $125,000? I don't know of any grants that big. Carl? Sounds like Carl's got the answer. <laughs> Brian, that uh, actually that grant you and I discussed um, about six or eight weeks ago, will do up to 500,000. Okay. Um, through the uh, state with the tribes, museums, and, and artifacts. It's not the typical state historical grant. That one's typically up to 10000 Now, it is a competitive grant that would be um, awarded or not awarded. So there's no guarantee at all, but we would definitely make our best plug for that. Yeah. Well, the next cycle, it would have to be the next cycle. I think it was June. Yeah. So, so if we were denied that grant, though, we could apply for another grant. Yeah, there's lots of grants. I mean, I don't know if there's lots of grants, but we could certainly keep applying. Meaning if we were denied grants. on that. Right. We, we could a, look for other. The historical grant is, like I said, typically 10000 Part of the grant Brian and I talked about with the, with the older um, buildings as well, there was a smaller section of twenty five up to 25000 And then there was the larger uh, uh, grant as well. Um, are these refundable grants or are these we have to say yes we're willing to pay it and then hopefully get the grant and wait until august yeah. to so, put so these typically in on a matching grant uh, whether this would end up being a 50 50 match or a, a 75 percent us 25 percent them we would spend 100 percent of the money show the expense and they would reimburse us either that 50 or 25 percent so yeah my works. i guess my question is do we have to wait i'm with janine we, we've been working on this for over a year and just. I, and there's our community too. I mean, I am a great salesman. I mean, I, <laughs> I think we can get a lot from our community. I think they would want to pitch in and help with this. Mm -hmm. So we would do lots of things to help also contribute to this. A dollar a square exactly. for toilet paper. I, my mind is going. <laughs> that's, whoa, that's a good idea. So a dollar. I'm not sick I that. Dave, <laughs> could we go, could we give, a, uh, just give her permission to go ahead and let the, the people know that uh, we are supportive of that. Or yeah, do we have to do a motion? There are, no, there's a couple of things you can, um, well, because, we maybe should have addressed this before the budget adjustment. Oh, you could you could reopen the budget adjustment if you want to appropriate money for that. Now, uh, you could have them apply, and, and we could put that in the next year budget that we're starting on right now. That wouldn't be approved until July. Right. I would rather them go now, but I would also it, like to no, to see what it's going to cost us to fix the air conditioning here too. So. No. Well, I, I worry about that one as well, but also we just got our audit back and we were penalized again because we have too much in our savings account. And so this seems like a viable, justifiable. Yeah, I, I don't want to get in trouble for saving money, but I, I would, I'm in favor of opening an amendment, coming back and making the adjustment to that, putting it on that amended budget and, and let's just get it done. Well, then and, we can and prepare go for and go to bed and Start go to bed and, and apply those and, and, air conditioning up. and we'll just keep our fingers crossed i mean i can't imagine that you wouldn't dot all of the i's and cross all the t's when you talk about tribal and and museums and and i mean i mean petite need is is yeah. all of that it's yeah um, I, I will pull that up again and look um if if money's appropriated and and if they say you've started the project and you can't get it then we might wait a few months you know, to try to get that money still. Well, I, that, think, um, I that, think we go ahead and get the project. So, or so we just go. We'll go ahead and I'll, I'll ask for a motion. Okay. 
How do you want to word it? Yeah, I'd have a motion to, to reopen the, the public hearing. Okay. Is that good, Jason? Yes. Then I'd make a motion that we reopen the amendments to the fiscal year budget 2021 2022. Okay, I'll, I'll have a second. I'll have, I think it, I'll second it. I think I seconded it the first time. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Washington. Then that will be real reopen the the fiscal budget 2021 20. We've got to do that first. Yes. That's what okay. I did. Oh, okay. Uh, did you get it, Kim? Kim's got it. I don't know why you, said, you seconded it. With it. I seconded it to reopen the. Yeah. Uh, now we just got to vote on it. Okay. Now do I need to do uh, do a public hearing, right? Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. You have to vote. They haven't voted at all. Is it a roll call vote, Kim? It's a roll call vote. Well, you're, you're opening the budget is all you're doing right now. Well, all we have is a motion on the table to open the budget. And a second. And a second. So we've now got we a vote, vote to open the budget. Okay. All in favor. Of, uh, and that's a, is that just a regular vote, Kim? No roll call? Roll call. Yes, roll call. It's a roll call. Okay. Uh, we have a motion been seconded to open the, the, the budget, uh, starting with Council Hewlett. Yes. Council Hyatt. Yes. Council Proscard. Yes. Council Carter. Yes. Council Christensen. Yes. Okay. So now we need to go to a, a, a public hearing. Yeah, we can present. So I, the, the presentation would be to reopen the budget to appropriate, and it would need to come from the general fund. Okay. The amount of two hundred fifty-two. Two what? Two hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. I'll read it in. Yeah, two hundred fifty-two thousand. So we need a motion for that. We need to round a little bit. That's that's rounded up seventy sixty nine dollars, but <laughs> no, I'm, right, I'm we might need more like two seventy five. The rate things are going, right. I'd round it to the two sixty mark. You're tight one. Take what might go two seventy five, so not to exceed that. <laughs> We're doing this on the fly. Jeff's coming for fifty million. <laughs> Okay, so now, now that's the proposal. Now uh, you need public to open it for a public hearing. Let the public. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'll accept a motion to uh, open a public hearing. Mayor, I would make a motion that we reopen the public hearing or open a public hearing with the intent of amending the fiscal 2021 22 budget in the amount of $275,000 for the restrooms at the Petit Nate. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Yes. Okay, we'll open a public hearing. Please step to the mic and state your name and speak clearly. Uh, try to limit your, your comments to three minutes or less, whether you agree, disagree with the previous comments. Uh, please don't state new information and don't repeat. So uh, if anyone would like to address us at the public hearing. Anybody online? Not seeing anyone, uh, hearing of anyone, uh, I'll accept a motion to close the uh, public hearing. I'll make the motion. I'll move. Okay. Second it. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Okay, Janine, you got your wish. Thank no. you. No, no. Now, we have motion. now we just have a motion. motion. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I thought you made it. Okay. Let me know when to cheer. We're not done yet. <laughs> okay, we need a motion to allocate the 275. Mayor, uh, I would make a motion that we amend the budget to an additional $275,000 for the purpose of the renovation of the restrooms at the Petitney. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion been seconded. And again, this will be roll call vote. To Council Christensen. Yes. Council Carter? Yes. Council Proscard? Aye. Council Hyatt? Aye. Council Hewlett? Yes. Okay, good. Motion carries. Thank you. Mayor, can I, I can celebrate? Thank you. I'm, I'm super excited for this, and I will be completely honest. Being on council has been a total eye opening experience, and Petite Neat was probably one of my biggest eye opening. When you came in and told us how many people actually visit that building, every single year now that's I've, I've been in there a lot of times and never once signed the books and we just counted books and the numbers were super high and so i think that it is a gem and we needed to 
to take the effort and do it. And so we appreciate your efforts to get us this far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you it's quite the investment that we spent means we bought the building for a dollar, huh, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> we paid a dollar for that back in the 90s. Yep. Mayor, Mayor I'd like to make a comment. If I don't have a, anything I want to bring yes. for budget yes, item, go ahead. I'd like to have Janine uh, bring it up. So anytime I have anything for a budget item. Yeah, she gets it. She gets, she gets it, it through. I that. <laughs> she was oblivious. She didn't hear that. No. Okay, we're well, moving on to number four. <laughs> Resolution Orchard Grove Annexation Petition for consideration of acceptance and further review at 11804 South, 4600 West. Chris? All right, give me a hot Here. second. We're trying to. Get here. the screen sharing enabled. Not some of them. Okay, so as was introduced, this is the Orchard Grove annexation. Um, it's four parcels. I'll show you the map in the in a second. It's twenty one point four acres total. Um, the applicant went through the new process that's required by the county and the state. All the boxes are checked. The I's are dotted. The T's are crossed. They're not creating an Islander Peninsula. And tonight we're just asking for acceptance or denial for further review. So these are the four parcels in question. This is immediately south of city limits and just north of the Taylor Ranch. Um, and this is the annexation plat that has been submitted so far. Obviously we haven't reviewed it because you haven't accepted it for the review yet, but we will and we'll get those details to you if you do accept it for that. And that's all she wrote. Pretty straightforward then, right? Okay. Any discussion from the council? If there are no uh, um, questions. So I have this... some questions. Okay. Which one? Um, so ahead. when I was look, I was looking at that, and what I was wondering is, if we don't have enough sewer to go that far, why are we annexing more property? Till we figure that up, Chris. sewer problem. Chris is going to answer that for you. Okay. We were hoping to review that further and figure it out. Yeah, this is just acceptance for further review. So we haven't we haven't delved into the the nitty gritty with it all. This is just making sure at the bare minimum, i.e., they're not creating an island, they're not creating the peninsula. They went through the proper process. That's all been met. We'll look at the rest if it's accepted. So that'll be that'll be part of your review, right? Correct. So, so as of right now, we don't have a planned purpose for this. I'm assuming it's probably residential, but is it slated other than just residential? I mean, kind of the same story. We haven't taken much of a look. Yeah, but I'm just just kind of. Curious. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's not going to sure. change, but I, I just was wondering. But that will be part of our review process as well. Okay. Brett, Brett, I think on the general plan, part of that along the frontage there is for uh, commercial. Okay. I'm right. And with all of this, we'll work with the applicant to make sure that it is, you know, in line with the future land use map and the general plan and all that. So, so what we're, we're obligated to is, is having you research it further. Mm -hmm. I look at that one there. Here's, here's the interstate. Here's eight. Well, this is farther west than, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm confused. The maps never are big enough for my likings. So it's pretty close to that Hawk Moon property. Yeah, it's right next to the Hawk Moon, but I can't tell if I'm looking at it upside down or backwards. I, I see it as being a low density is what the general plan yeah. says. Yeah, it is. three to five units per acre is probably what it is right there. But I thought we were talking commercial because of where it's at. Yeah, I think right against the frontage road, I think that's going to be commercial. I'm I'm looking at it, Brian, and it shows uh, on the general plan. It shows low low density. That, that wasn't the intent. I know that we they were supposed to change that a long time ago. I swear I'm looking at it. Yeah, because I understand. And those kind of answers will come from the from what we're doing right now. If we give you permission right. to do that, those answers will come. Right. As soon as it gets accepted for further review, we'll put it on Blue Beam. Okay. Everybody in the DRC will take a look. We'll make okay. sure it's compliant. I think under those circumstances, we could move forward with it. I think we'll okay. move forward. That's I'm I'm in favor. 
Yeah, I'm too. Okay. I'll make a motion that we um, accept the Orchard Grove annexation petition for consideration of acceptance and further review at 11804 South 4600 West. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. Uh, roll call vote starting with Council Hewlett. Yes. Council Hyatt. Yes. Council Proskard. Yes. Council Carter. Yes. Council Christensen. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, final number five, final plat approval for Quail Mountain Subdivision Plat A. Chris, you're up again. Thanks for the eight seconds to sit down. I really did enjoy that. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is, hold on, we've got some technical difficulties. Give me just one second. Okay, so the final plot for Quail Mountain, um, this is about 370 South, 1300 East. You've seen the preliminary already. Um, this is the final plat itself that will be recorded. Um, it, it's, it was actually submitted with the preliminary plan. Staff have looked at it. We've worked with the applicant. Um, again, it's a 26 lot subdivision. Preliminary was approved back in November. The final matches everything that was approved on the preliminary, which is the biggest part of our review. Um, it's in the R110 zone, matches everything for that. It also matches the quarter acre limit in the East Side Comprehensive Plan. So go back to the plat, please. Staff's reviewed the radius on the cul de sac. Mm -hmm. like At least I hope they did, did they? Okay. Yeah. It's the Geography people was love, never mirror. People love to live in a cul-de-sac. Yes, yeah, they do. And, and it's got some it's bigger the, lots as a result of that. The, ing, the ingra, egress kind of just coming out there as long as it doesn't create a blind corner coming up from the one direction. That would be my only concern. But it doesn't look like it's a main thoroughfare. And I can't I can't get my bearings on it. Um, is this... Look at the map up in the top left. Yeah, I know. That didn't help me much. Other side of 1300 East around... Yep. Three, east of the hospital south oh, okay yeah. yeah oh there now see i see it if 198 would go through town straight it wouldn't confuse me so much <laughs> that is well, well now you're asking you not to do things that make right, sense well right there yeah okay <laughs> I'm, I'm good with it but yeah we've we've worked with the applicant i mean we discussed the cul-de-sac in particular and yeah we've gone to the proper channels make sure everything with it is I'm good. any potential impacts of the cul-de-sac have been mitigated so okay okay I'm good. Sounds like we don't have any more council discussion. Uh, yeah. So I'll accept the motion. Told you everything else about it. So that's pretty much it on my end. Yep. Brian, do you want to make a motion? Motion. I can if you want me to. Well, I didn't <laughs> want you to feel left out. Oh, I, I don't feel left out. Okay. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> jump in here. You should. I'm eating all your candy. For a Quail Mountain Subdivision Plat A, approximately at 370 South, 1300 East, in the R1 residential zone. Okay, we have a motion. We need a second. So I'll moved. second it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Going on to number six, resolution amendments to the Payson City fee schedule.
All right, Mayor Council, this is a continuation of the last PI rate discussion that we had, I don't remember, five months ago or six months ago. So it's the same format. I adjusted the cost because we raised the water rates with the last budget in July. So that is, is a lot of it. So I'll just show you a couple of things I did. So this is what the proposed rate for everyone would be. So the, the existing rate is in the blue up on the top. So it's 24.63 per month. I'm proposing $19 per month is the base rate. And then we would charge 60 cents per thousand gallons for the fifth, first 50,000 gallons. And then 75 cents for uh, the 50,000 to 90,000. And then anything over 90,000 would be a dollar a gallon. Obviously the goal is to keep this cheaper than the culinary because we don't want people illegally cross connecting and you know, trying to water their lawns off of the culinary so that it stays cheaper. But we obviously want to cover a lot of the improvements we just did, which, you know, we spent over 5 million on all the meters and that. So we want to obviously make sure, but I wanted to be fair. So what I did is I kind of show right here in this down here where it says old yearly total. So with that 2463, you know, somebody was paying that had a smaller lot was paying $295 and 56 cents. So if somebody used 22,000 gallons a month, they'd be paying 294, which you know, they might spend a little more, but then to try to keep it fair, when you go up to the half acre lot size, our current rate is 32.30 a month, which puts you at $387 a month. So if somebody used 50, 52,000 gallons, their bill would be, you know, over the year would be 385. Their monthly bill would be 50. The monthly bill during irrigation season is going to go up for everybody, but the overall per year is not really changing much if you're conscious of how much water you're using. So like okay. if I jump up to the one acre, which somebody on the council used to have a lot that big, but he split it down. So he can't do that anymore. You're, you're forced, um, you're forced do, him to do it. Do you want to know the bad news? I now have two three quarter acre lots. Well, I just signed on it last week. So okay. now I've got two of them back to back. So I got to pay twice that. All right. Um, my question isn't about that, but thank you, though, Travis. Yeah, uh, right. We do have the equal pay option, which I absolutely love to that. It just it's always the same. Is this something that is going to be available? Yeah, for I mean, that equal pay. It, it's the so same it's, concept we're using on the culinary right now. We have a tiered rate. Obviously, they look at that and they adjust it. I don't know. Cheryl would be better to answer that. But, uh, you know, I think right. it's once a year that they look at that and they adjust it depending on how much usage and what you're building in. But this would be the same concept as, you know, they do a year's worth and obviously then be able right. to do that. So, and, that, and that's, that's my concern, but um, yeah, now, anyway, I'll ask you Go the ahead. other question. I, I'm just debating on using one culinary connection or two culinary connections. How do you determine that or not culinary PI connections? So this would just be per meter. So if per, you per meter yeah. based on. So obviously, if you're someone who has purchased other lots next to your home and you have two or three meters, then yes, you're going to pay the two or three fees, depending on how many meters you have. But the typical residential homeowner that just has one meter, you would pay the base rate plus obviously any usage that you have during during irrigation. So. Well, okay. Can I. No, I'm just going to say one of the things that the council, when we started this a couple of years ago, was we wanted it as revenue neutral as possible. Right. And, and so as, as, if you look at Travis's uh, uh, examples here, the, the old yearly rate and the new yearly rates, if, if you use the amount of water that you should use, it, it's pretty equal to what it would be. It, it, it will get more expensive if you use a lot more water. Go back to the one acre comparison for me, would you? Can I play the devil's advocate here? Feel free. Sorry, Travis. No, you're good. This has been on my mind since uh, I started thinking uh, we're, we're going to be delivering CUP water here and receiving CUP water in the next, what, two years? It's probably closer to four. Four years before yeah. it's delivered? Mm -hmm. Not a guarantee on that, but that's probably. Do we know how much? Do we know? I mean, we already know what what that water is going to cost. Uh, approximately one point seven million per year. An arm and a leg. Two million bucks a year. 
Yes, that is I not guess, contemplated in this rate. No. That's just where I was going. Is that do we contemplate that in the rate at all? Not yet. Wanting um, to wanting to stay revenue, break even, citizen friendly. I, I'm concerned, and in four years I won't be sitting here. But at some point, somebody's going to have to eat this elephant, and it's going to be one big bite. Instead. Well, I tell everybody that we're letting people build houses so that we can even that burden out amongst all of us a little easier. I, I just, I just want to be aware that we've got this big elephant on our back. Yeah, Dave and I have had that discussion. <laughs> you know, and there's a couple options that the city will have to grapple with. One is that we we can defer that for a ten year period. Um, and you, you pay it over 40 years instead of 50 years for the CEP. So you, you pay the same amount, but if, um, I guess the advantage of deferring it is you'll have more houses to pay that when the time comes. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage is it's, it's short time, a period. short yeah. amount of period of time. Right. Uh, and then we wouldn't have access to use that water for 10 more years. And so I, I think with the growth, we need the water. We sure do. And we need that Central Utah project water, but. Yeah, these rates are not included there. It's going to be something that has to be addressed. We, we probably, maybe not this year, but in the next year or two, we need to start looking at that and education to the citizenry saying this water's coming online and it's this much more than we have been paying. Yeah, um, yeah I think the best thing would be to look at not like maybe this coming budget, but the following budget. Right. Look at what what will that need to go up and then incrementally figure that out? Like if we figure it's still three years away, obviously incrementally do it rather than one big, hard, you know, larger hit. And, and this and isn't I know that, really being driven by, by growth. It's being driven by what we've obligated ourselves to years and years and years ago. Correct. correct. That's correct. The other thing that we look at is, uh, and we, the council amended the water ordinance probably a year ago uh, that uh, we, we, we have some, some remnant water, like water that's already been transferred that can be used, uh, well water stuff. But right now, if somebody comes in and they don't have strawberry water or Salem Canal water, they have to purchase the CUP water. CUP water. We're trying to help build that up to help make payments. Okay, so yeah. that that's part of it. Um, the other thing is, is that I, I look at the CUP may actually counterbalance, counteract some of the other expenditures we would be looking at because right now our our irrigation ponds probably won't suffice the growth we have. The hope is that with this new system that we can actually use those as holding tanks and they'll refill faster when we have- We will need another pond in the future. That in is in future, our master but, plan, but so, yeah, we, we but look at that. kind of mitigate a little bit of those, what we would need without the CUP water. I mean, yeah. it's inevitable. Yeah. We've got- The canyon it, water so. is not really anything we can really count on anymore. So right now our- our only source is through the straw, you know, through strawberry, through the Highland Canal. Right. But the CUP doubles. Well, more yeah, than more, more than doubles more, more what than we doubles. have right now. Yeah. So yeah, we need the water and, and we need to honor the, the commitment that we made. So I just, I guess I would like to be ready for that day when that, that first bill comes. Yep. Correct. Okay. But yeah. This, this is, and, and obviously, you know, you on the council can decide if we adopt this tonight, you could, you could decide, Hey, we'll start doing this effective April 1st or whatever date, you know, everyone feels comfortable with typically, you know, the water comes on towards the end of April, 1st of May, but you know, it would be nice to start, start off the irrigation season and get information out on this is what, you know, the council has agreed this is going to be the rate or whatever it is. And then I, I, I think I prefer education. to go forward with this, but I would like to see some data uh, on what our projections are going forward. Yeah. And obviously this will be our first attempt at this. So, you know, if, we see revenue either coming in higher than we anticipate, which probably won't be the case, but if you know, we're lower, you know, we can adjust these rates a little bit and they'll be close rather than be way off. So. Yeah. Well, I think the first couple of months, you might be surprised. It might come in way higher as people real Depends don't, on how don't pay attention. They get their first bill. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like me and my greenhouse and my power bill, things had to change, but yeah. Um, I, and I appreciate your efforts, and I know I was not keen on this, and I was definitely the burr under your saddle through the entire process, but you you did what I asked. You kept it neutral, and so we can kind of phase it in, and if we do need to raise the prices for CUP, we 
it might be somebody else's problem. Which we will then. need to. If we, we will. And I, and I know that's inevitable, but no. we've also talked that Central Utah Water Conservancy District would really like us to put in uh, treatment plants and use it for culinary water. And so it's not necessarily all irrigation water. And we have to remember that, that there are other options to do. Yeah, and just so. for the record, the, the legislature last year did vote to make meters mandatory. So that with that, incentives that is not until 2040 that you have to have it, but any new meter or any new connection has to be metered regardless of if you have a pressure irrigation system. Yeah. But, you know, if you have an existing one, like we had, you are now going to have to put the meters in like we did. And, you know, with that being a mandate, you know, they will only get more expensive because we're already having a hard time getting meters right now anyway, because of COVID. Yeah. Right. So is that all water connections, including culinary wells? Every yeah, they they I, I, I mean pretty the much that's, you're supposed to meter everything. Yeah, that, that's so. gonna really come back to to hit a bunch of people that have been pumping out of the wells on their private land yep. for all these years, and they're gonna have to start metering it. But, so Travis, yes. I, have a, I have a question. So, oh, we haven't had the one meeting with Strawberry, have we? That's what I was wondering: is are we gonna get the one hundred percent, or is it gonna be suspended? Going to um, I talked yeah. to Marty Larson last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago, one of the two, okay. and he said that their board had just met and voted to give us the full allocation. So it okay. sounded like that's how they're proceeding, and at least at this point. Have they raised their price? I have not heard on that yet. We okay. can do whatever you want if you want to make. Well, that's what I was wondering because we don't want to lose money. Okay. I mean, if they raise their price, we definitely want to make sure that we cover. I know that the city pays more than I do, um, but it's still, you, you still want to make sure you cover, you know, the prices that are going to continue to go up because it is water and everything I keep reading and hearing about, it's probably going to get to a point where we're going to have to decide, do we want drinking water or do we want a lawn? You want to skip this one that comes right down to the... I don't know why you worry about it, Teresa. It falls from the sky once a year. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll just suspend the agenda. Travis, I, I think you've done a really good job on this. Thank you. I, do I would like to see is us put something on the website <laughs> conservation and how to conserve and some hints as this comes out because, yes, yeah, some people are going to be shocked and some people do really well. But if we can put information <laughs> showing that we're trying to help them, I think that'd be good. Okay, yeah, I'll put a lot of the stuff that I gathered last year when we did the open houses, and I'll put that, I'll make sure that gets on the website this in the next couple of days. And we talked about in the pre meeting that we will put some article out in the Chronicle and we'll put things on social media and our website because we need to get it out and, and we probably would need to make this effective May 1st or something. So when the water turns on, uh, April 1st. April 1st. Yeah. No. Yeah, because just as a quick rundown, I wrote these down. So right now our culinary rate is 23.36 on the base rate. And then we charge a dollar four for every thousand gallons up to only six thousand gallons. And then it goes up to a dollar thirty-three for the next twelve thousand. And then anything over eighteen thousand is a dollar sixty-three. So we're definitely, like I said, we're trying to make sure that this stays cheaper so that it incentivizes people to stay using it, not wanting to switch. Cause I think the fear was, is that, you know, now my water bill is going to be $400. And I think we can demonstrate that if you're, unless you just let it water, you know, eight hours a day, every day, your bill should not be that excessive. So. Well, and I think, I mean, we've got the tools in place. I'd love to have seen it on the bills last year. We didn't quite make it that far, but um, they can monitor it. They can look at it live. You I mean, you can walk out and look at your meter if push comes to shove. And things like that we've really we put forth the effort and i think that it we just need to maybe sugarcoat it a little bit when it goes out to the public and say hey we want to reward those of you who are conserving water and and penalize those that are not and we've gone with the neutral plan if you are using what you should be using your bills should not change yeah and i think we had a couple of that, people that signed up for the portal that we you know activated so you could because like i can log in right now and see exactly you know what my power usage is because i have a census meter also on that and i can see what my pi usage is obviously every day too so and i think i tried and i failed and i got frustrated but 
We just need to Doesn't make sure that, that people understand this is not as a result of growth. It's a result of how, uh, you know, water is expensive. Yeah, and the state's really pushing right. conservation, yep. obviously, too. Yep. So. Okay. Example, one of the other things on the, the fee schedule is exam and supper tickets. We're proposing that the exam and supper goes from $16 up to 1850 Still a good price. And Brian, that is from Janine. <laughs> I thought we ought to raise. I think we ought to raise more till we till we get so there's not a backlog of people trying to go. Let's try twenty five and see if we can slow it down or something. Even if you went to twenty two, because you're going to pay twenty eight for a if you went out and ate anywhere, and they're not going to get that good of the fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, 25. But we're trying to fund the toilets with your salmon supper. Um, the, the thing that I, having served the salmon coming back to this, if we, if we raised the price a little bit and provided, like we had clamshells, we threw the salmon in and handed it out in something I think would be advantageous. And if that means we have to raise the price a dollar to buy one more disposable, and I know that's wasteful, but it's frustrating when people get up there and they're like, where are you going to put this big piece of fish right on top of my food? And it, and yeah. if it would, if it would, and then we could kind of portion size it a little bit better. Say, hey, you know what? We have this size yeah. clamshell, and this is what's going out. And, and 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 I'm not trying to micromanage that, but if it comes down to it, it says, yeah, let's raise the price to 1950 so we can afford that, right. and and that's the way it's served. That I don't know. To me, that makes more sense. Yeah, we don't want to gouge anybody. We want to make sure that it's it covers our cost and 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 helps us where we, we want to be. We helped. didn't cover too too good a cost when we had to go buy that additional salmon last year. No, oh. and we need to exactly right. And so I I don't think we're gouging anybody by no. raising it. That's right. Uh, where do you want to raise it to? Twenty two. What is their what's their charge that they charge for the convenience fee? That's a pretty big jump in one year. <laughs> well, three hundred thousand for two toilets. <laughs> Twenty two yeah. for a piece of salmon's not bad. <laughs> I tell you, you're about to a good eat round number will be twenty dollars. So. Give me a break. <laughs> How much was it last year? Six. Yeah, it was seventeen. I don't yeah, want to make too big of a jump in one year. I would go to 19 and make it an even number. Okay. Well, if you go 19 and then charge the dollar convenience fee, it's 20 bucks to them. So how are we looking at it? How can we use the city uses their own program? Oh. So I have a question. Yeah. Have we checked to see what the price is this year? Yeah, the, those fish are still little. They haven't caught them yet. You got to wait till they get big. <laughs> I know, but I know that when I've ordered the, the salmon, clowns up here, aren't we? <laughs> it's more expensive. So she might want to call and see how much they're charging this year. Two, two. I, I, I think we stay at 22. I, I, Can I make I, a motion, Mayor? Make I'm a ready motion. to make a motion. Make a motion. We beat this thing right. over the yeah, head. Yeah, we have. Well, I, I'm just, I'm kind of, can I ask, I, you, you got to make sure it's good and dead before we fry it, right? That's right. <laughs> um, some, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking outside the box, but no, that'll just confuse things. I'm going to stop. Okay. Mayor, make, your, make your motion. I'll second your motion. motion. That we amend the fee schedule for the PI that was presented to us this evening and that we raise the salmon supper fee to allow staff to determine the cost of salmon and come back to us with that final cost. Okay. Is that fair, Dave? Can, can, 
Can I? I make want those salmon to be able to some start. adjustment to that. Twenty-two. Then I'm going to say twenty-two dollars. My motion is that we raise the salmon supper fee to twenty-two dollars. I think that if the price of the salmon comes in, we adjust the size of the piece that they receive. They're, they're I, used, that's why I'm saying the, they're used to that piece the, of salmon. That's why they come. And if it's the serving the same, because yeah. we're raised, we're, we don't want to right. raise and reduce the serving. Yeah. That's, why no, no, that's, I, that's my motion. Okay. Is there a second? I said I would second it. I'm going to second it at $22. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, I think that's a little high. So I'll probably vote against just for, for that reason. If you're going to go higher, I would go more than 20. How about if we go up to 22? And leave staff the 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 flexibility the flexibility to determine based the on the cost. Okay. Can, what if okay, can we ahead. put it between eighteen and twenty two dollars so that if somebody comes back and reads that it's their discretion and they're gouging us so that it falls back to us at eighteen. <laughs> Let's not you make it what? too complicated. I, and I understand Let's that, not. but it's this the citizens come back and they yell at us, and I don't and I don't want my uh, if the staff to receive the brunt your... end of that. Yeah, that's a huge increase. I I said up to. I know, I'm I'm telling you. It's, I don't think it's a bad price, but. So will, will you remake that motion? Yes, I'll re I'll reamend my motion. That's that's good twenty. <laughs> She's got to fight the battle. My my motion is amended to He's, everything that I said, but up to twenty two dollars. Staff makes the final recommendation after they check the market price for the product. I think we can live with that. I feel a lot's better with that. I'll second that one. Okay, okay. We have a motion that's been seconded. Uh, calls for a roll call vote, starting with Council Hewlett. Aye. Council Hyatt. Aye. Council Proscard. Aye. Council Carter. Aye. Council Christensen. Aye. Okay, we beat that one to death, so it passes. Hey, Janine, I don't ever want to pay for that. Can I forever serve <laughs> as an emeritus here? <laughs> okay. Oh. Awesome Mayor, Do you have a motion for yes. Brett, I have another motion, if I could. Could we, I make a motion that we suspend the agenda and let the mayor move at his discretion with the wastewater treatment gentlemen that are here. We have a motion, we have I'll a second. second it. Okay, we have a motion and a seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, aye. you're back up here, Travis. We don't get these guys out of here. They'll think we're a bunch of hicks. <laughs> so council and mayor, I appreciate it. I was thinking the 22 so we could help fund the treatment plant when you hear the numbers. So that was wide, but um, we're so going to put pay toilets in the park from here on out. True, true. So Jason Broom, he's with Forsgren. He's a, the, one of our engineers that we've got uh, doing the design on this. So he'll be doing the majority of the presentation, but I'll obviously be up here too. And obviously, you know, Jeff and Tyler are here, Chris is uh, with Hazen and then um, Tim's with Alder. He's with the construction company because we did a CMGC on this. So the contractor's on board right now helping with the design, which I know that sounds like we were supposed to keep costs down and you'll, you can ask as many questions as you want after you see the presentation. But it, you know, we, we had a lot of unanticipated stuff that you know a lot a lot of the new equipment won't fit in the existing buildings that we have so that's part of why it is and we'll get into that so i was hoping you'd said the emts were here with the paddles <laughs> scott scott's at a fire <laughs> training so brad will have to suffice in Saint with cpr <laughs> but yeah he, jason's just getting logged in and so as soon as we get that we'll get started so more than double travis uh yes and we should have had janine present this sounding from the <laughs> previous conversation 
Janine, and I wouldn't be anywhere close with this one. Not anywhere. Close. The only thing I'm seeing here is that we we drug our feet for a long time to try to save money and it come back yeah. and bite us. And, and, and that is and that's thing. why we're not waiting on the toilets, Janine. We learned from past experience. And that is one thing Alder can can attest to is they're they're doing um, Spanish Fork and uh, Provo's plants right now, and and Provo did the same thing. The cost got really high, so they stepped back and tried to redesign it. Now they're right back up to where they were on costs and actually getting less than what they wanted to do. So that just was kind of an intro on that. But here's Jason. And... Janine, you may want to stay and hear this because you probably won't want to flush those toilets. <laughs> Dale, thank you for being here. We appreciate you coming and supporting thank you, Petit Nick. Tommy, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's 90, 90 plus See. years old. Yeah. He's still over now. Yeah, we'll every morning at I seven o'clock. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you, Mayor thank and you. Council. Um, so, um, I was going to make a joke about Janine, but what I'll joke about instead is we hear you've got some savings and we've got a great way for you to spend it. You don't have that much savings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as, as we mentioned, we're here to talk about the treatment plant tonight, uh, some changes in our, our budget. And um, as Dave alluded to early, uh, stuff just seems to be costing a lot more lately. Um, and that's, that's a little bit of our story here. Uh, we first wanted to hit into... Uh, what we've been going over for the last year as we've taken a look at it, the treatment plan and at the, the things we need to do. And so we've got this, this list of goals that as a team we've developed. And I just wanted to hit these real quick so you can kind of see what we're thinking about. Um, and number one is really, is really our number one goal. We want the best long-term solution we can get um, at the best cost. That doesn't always mean the cheapest cost, but we wanna make sure that, that we're putting in stuff that's gonna stay there for a while and be set up for the future. Uh, number two goes along with that, just meeting our expected growth demands. I mean, you all know what this area is supposed to do over the next 20 to 40 years, and we want to make sure that we're, we're set to meet that. Um, number three is, is converting the process to biological nutrient removal. This is, um, per the state requirements, this is the process we need to go to, um, and that's making a big change in our plant out there. Um, number four goes kind of along with number one. Again, we, we want to make sure that in the future we've got easier expansion. Um, some of our, our past upgrades out there have not been so easy to, to expand in the future, so we want to make sure we're set up for that. Uh, number five, do we? Um, we do. I mean, so, so we're targeting a, a flow now and a flow in the future, and we want to make sure where it's easy to set up for something in the future, like just adding another piece of equipment, we're set up for that. Um, number five, continue to provide uh, reuse water. Most of that right now is going to the power plant for cooling water. But as we move into the future, um, we'll develop more excess water that um, um, we want to make sure that we're set up for. We can go to the type one and, and put that back in your PI system in the future. Uh, number six, this is sort of an ever changing target with Utah Lake. Um, we're, we're certain some lower limits are going to come down. We've We've had some some rumors and some off the record sort of numbers. So we want to make sure that again, that we're, we're set up well to meet those kind of needs. Number seven is reduce odors, especially with uh, some neighbors that may be coming in um, nearby. We want to make sure that, that we're minimizing what the public notices of it. Uh, number eight, so improved staff safety there. At the current plant, there are some challenges with maintenance um, with some safety issues. And we want to make sure that those things are taken care of. And number nine, um, we're, we're always, you know, we're always aware of budgets and, and needing to stay within budgets and keep budgets down. So we're, we're leveraging as, as much of our existing assets, our buildings, our space, our land, whatever we can, um, where possible. And then number 10 is reduce our ongoing maintenance cost. Um, you know, right now the plan is getting to a point where it's, it's taking a lot of money to keep it running. So we want to we want to minimize that as we go into the future. 
So in summary, um, this is our, our cost estimate based on our preliminary design report that we've just uh, pr uh, produced a draft of. We're in the 50 to $55 million range. I wanted to get that out there first, so that you're a little bit shocked by it, and then we'll talk about it. Um, as, as we go through here, we want to talk about these three main things, though. How does this compare? We're going to compare with what some other neighboring cities around here are doing or, or have been doing recently. We'll talk about why the costs are higher. And a couple of the main things here I've highlighted, you know, number one, our vision for the project has changed a little bit from, from when the planning study was done. And then I hate to say it, but, but COVID is, is affecting us here through construction costs, um, supply problems, and labor shortages. I, I know everybody blames it on that, but, but it is out there. And then lastly, um, how are we minimizing the impacts of these higher costs? Well, we're looking at, um, we're making sure we're getting accurate costs earlier, um, which is what we've done with this project by bringing on a, a contractor early. Again, we're trying to reuse buildings and structures wherever possible that we can do that. Um, we, we have looked at some ways to reduce the scope and, and make sure that we're... And then lastly, looking at some, some options and some creativity on the rates and the financing side of things. So first, that cost comparison that we talked about, um, what you see here is a measure we use a lot of time in engineering world, and it's, it's basically the, the total construction cost divided by the daily capacity. So that's your, for example, that first line there, um, our project construction cost at, at about 52 million divided by the capacity that we'll have per day. So 4 million gallons per day is what that stands out to. So for us to build it um, for a gallon of capacity is costing $13 per gallon. And we've listed out a couple of neighbors there. So Salem was a project that we did a few years ago and you could see um, they were slightly more than that. Um, Spanish Fork is, is currently doing an upgrade and their the present cost um, per gallon you can see is, is a little bit more. They're doing a slightly different process um, and building more new structures than we are. Then on the flip side, you can see Provo here. Um, they are reusing a lot more of their existing old structures um, and doing a little bit different process. So they're slightly less than that, but, but overall we're kind of in the, the ballpark of what we're seeing for cost for wastewater treatment. So is it 52 million will max out at 4 million gallons a day or is that what we're currently? We're not currently processing 4 million gallons a day. Aren't we closer to one? We're in the two range. So that, that will be what the capacity of the upgraded system will be. Um, again, just a summary of, of the causes of our cost increase. So construction costs have gone up. Uh, the second part is just the original scope was, was underestimated and, and didn't quite meet the needs of what we've, we've done as this third bullet, our vision for the project, our goals for the project have, have evolved over time. So construction costs change, just, this is just a general note about uh, our metrics for the last year. You can see these three indexes here, some common indexes. In years past, we're around the 1% range. And over the last year, they've, they've gone uh, much higher than that 1% range. You can see six to 8%. Uh, the second item is just the high volume of local construction work, whether it's the prison, whether it's things like Facebook centers, um, there is a lot of construction work going on, you know, um, apartment buildings, and there's just um, not a lot of labor to go around. And that's what we talked about there with number three, the labor shortage. It's just a lot of work, not a lot of people to do it. And that, that certainly affects our cost. Uh, material supply problems. Um, I could speak to a project we're working with in Idaho right now, trying to get a generator, ordered it a year ago, and still have no idea when it'll be delivered. And so it's, it's things like that that are really, really causing cost to go crazy. And one note um, down there at the bottom in the yellow construction costs will continue to rise. We, it'll never be cheaper than right now to build um, anything you're trying to build. You know, we never see costs go down. They may slowly get more expensive over time, but they'll never be cheaper. So this, this um, bar chart here shows a comparison between the the capital facilities plan, which was the basis for the $23 million budget previously, and our current budget for the preliminary design report. Um, the, the previous costs are in the blue, um, the orange is our current cost. And just to point out a few, a few items here and there, um, you can see, for example, no general costs were included earlier. 
Um, site work and dim or site work is is pretty low compared to what we're actually needing to do. Um, some of the items are closer as you go through there, but in general, most of it is is more. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through uh, why that is. Um, this is a a map of the proposed improvements from the facilities plan study. Um, and there's a few things here that we just want to point out. For example, if I go to the right side here, this is the, the, the main treatment basins. Um, these are, are fairly undersized. They should be um, anywhere from five to 10 times larger than that. Um, and so that, that certainly contributes to, to our cost and our scope overall. Um, things like this blower building are kind of small. The blower provides the air for this tank here. Um, some other things like this is a building addition down here for the headworks with the, uh, the screens. Um, you know, to build a building addition for 182K, I mean, we just heard a bathroom by itself is 300K. So pretty tough to do that. Uh, the same thing over here on the dewatering building. Um, you know, generally our thought is that as, as any engineer, us or anybody else had gone through and developed this scope with these guys over time, um, these items would have been fleshed out and the cost would have risen over time. So, so regardless of who who designs this, who builds it. We need a certain volume to treat, we need certain processes in there, they would have cost the same. So some of our new major structures, um, we're doing a new headworks. Headworks again is the main part where we screen out trash and get things like sand and grit out. Um, and as we looked at that, when we, we realized that there's not enough room within that building to have the, the right amount of uh, equipment um, from a capacity standpoint and um, needing to add on and connect with the old is pretty difficult. The old building is has some challenges in it, needs upgrades to it. So at that point, again, we're talking about let's 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 invest, let's get ready for the future so we can have the space to easily add on. And that's that's what pushed us toward us a new headworks here. Uh, secondary clarifier, that's a, a tank that we used to settle things out. Um, the current one is too shallow. It sits at a weird uh, weird elevation. It's very old. It was built back in the uh, I think that was in the 60s upgrade. So um, again, we originally that was intended to be reused. We've decided, no, we need another one because that that's really our last line of defense. That's what makes the clear water that goes out to, uh, to the creek. Um, some pump stations here that we need to, again, to replace just due to age and due to difficulty in maintaining existing equipment. Um, our sludge dewatering building, just again, not enough space within there to put the right amount of capacity that we need. Um, and again, there's challenges there as well as maintaining the equipment. Um, sludge tanks blower building, again, that's the, air, that's the thing that's going to blow air into our, our sludge tanks to keep it fresh. Um, the original idea was to put them inside of a current building that was built um, with, again, with that 1960s original construction. Uh, they just won't fit. They're, they're, they're very big. Um, we've talked about some, some changes on the reuse tank, um, mainly there to, to try to capture more of the water coming out of the, the plant at the, the tail end that goes to the power plant. Um, with the way it's set up now, we can't capture all of it. And so we have to use some potable water at times from the drinking water system where we don't want to do that. So this is, this is making that effort to capture as much as we can and eventually all of the water that they'll need so that we can avoid using potable water. Um, odor control was not planned before either. Again, we want to make sure that that it's the plant is a good neighbor and that um, we reduce any kind of odors that are going to come out of there. Uh, water department building, they're currently using an old um, maintenance building that the sewer plant used to use. Uh, we need that spot for our clarifier. So we've got um, a new water department building shown. And I'll show you that here on this next screen. Um, you can see these are, again, those new buildings, so uh, they're highlighted in yellow. We've got the headworks, the blower building. We're adding some, some additional clarifier out here, RAS. We've got this new sledge press building, um, some additional tankage out here at the reuse. And then uh, we've kind of identified this here as our new water department building location. You got enough ground for all the new buildings? We do. It's, it's tight, but we've got enough ground to fit it in. Um, what you'll see here is... Oops. So it, I just wanted to point out, so this area right here will all be abandoned when we're done, but it has to obviously keep running while we build the new plant mm -hmm. so we can still obviously treat the, you know, the sewer. So this, this 
area will all be, like I said, not be used anymore with the new plant when it's completely built, but it has to stay active while we do it. And so that area will open up, but it, we can't just do that to start with, or, it, or we will, we're already violating right now, just, I mean, the state knows this, our new, our plant right now is just not keeping up with meeting the state's demands that we have. And so the faster we can do this, the better off we're gonna be in obviously getting back in compliance. So the new water department building will come <clears throat> at a later time, like when it's all done, when they decommission the old one, they'll put that back into service. Well, this are they this the these two tanks are not currently in service, so we can take that out and build it now. We need we need to build it first before we can take it out to build this other clarifier tank here. So it would be it would be one of the earlier things we do. Can we add a parks department building to that too? For the same 55 million? A library down there. <laughs> but, Do you want to sit up on top? <laughs> yeah, let's go New city building. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. I, I'm concerned. Four million gallons a day, roughly 40,000 people. Is that about right? Yeah, I think our target population was around 55,000. 55. Mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable with that. I'm just, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate and say, is 4 million gallons a day enough with well, what we have on the ground? I, I probably need to explain our jargon in the engineering world. 4 million gallons is the average over the whole year. And then we target other things like a max day and a max month and a peak hour. And so um, for the 4 million gallons, for a worse day, it'll treat actually a little over eight. Yeah, 8 million gallons per day. So that the four that is- tax the system if you're in 8 million gallons a day at a constant basis. Well, at a constant, yes, but, it, but so it's built to peak. Built to peak, we can handle 8 million at a peak. And, okay. it, it, will, it will pass through 8 million gallons per day, you okay. know, on a peak basis. Yeah. So back to your, you're targeting 55,000 residents or 55,000 uses. Uh, it's more than 55,000 people. <clears throat> it is. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll be in the grave. <laughs> and, and the light blue on the screen, the light blue areas are what for the next upgrade was what we'd have to do to basically go up to what was it, six what, million? What would it cost us to go to five million a day? Just, I, I, know, I know I'm asking hypothetical, but. <laughs> 50 more, is that what you said, Travis? <laughs> <laughs> to, to do an additional million gallons a day. Well, at that, that $13 a gallon, yep. you know, you're 15 to $20 million more possibly. I was just thinking maybe we should step them through kind of the, the, the evaluation was done as far as projections of when we'd hit that $4 million, excuse me, 4 million gallons a day um, capacity. Mm -hmm. And so but as Travis was saying, the light blue are additional structures that would be needed to actually take that to 6 million gallons a day. And that is predicted to be after, was it um, 2040 was the date for the 4MGD? 2040 was for 4 no, 2045 was for 4MGD. So, so the, this capacity design is based on projections to 2045. And then there's already a plan in place for additional provisions that would take us up an additional 50% to get us to that six MGD. And technology is so, gonna change too. Exactly, so we're, we're, we're trying to prepare for the future, but build, we're trying to hit that sweet spot, right? We wanna give you enough capacity to where you can grow, but yet not overbuild, but have provisions so that as you need it, we can expand and, and add additional capacity. Okay, so I'm gonna play devil Sorry. one more time, Travis. <laughs> Our, our intake line, lines, line coming from the west. We're at max capacity, correct? When we when we build out what we've scheduled to build out. Um, I'll know I'll know that better. We've got Hanson on and loose getting our sewer model up to date, okay. and I'm trying to to make sure the data is accurate because we've updated that 21 inch line that I've already talked to you guys about. And once we get that, I've also had them. You I'm also updated that line. No, well, no, they're they're well. I've got the data in there, so they're updating the model, and then they're adding in the proposed new developments that we already know will get into it. 
because that 21 inch line will take everything from Patterson's development over on the east side, everything down in the Spring Lake area. You know, it takes all the stuff that White Horse is trying to do. It takes a large area. Uh, I was what I'm, you know, we went out almost to Taylor Ranches tonight. Yeah. And so that's, that's part of the problem. And then I'll be able to answer exactly how much capacity is left in those lines. The, even the 36 inch line that we upgraded a few years ago, I'll have all those answers. And then I'll be able to tell you better, you know, how much more, how many more developments and units can we allow before that line's at capacity? I don't have that answer yet, but that is something we're working on. Cause obviously I've got, I've got white horse call me every week. I have, sure. I have another developer that wants to develop the Chrysler property on fourth North with a bunch of industrial buildings. So, I mean, we're trying to get answers so that, you know, not only the development, but I can give you guys answers on, this is exactly where we are before this has to be upgraded. But yes, that, that is something, you know, we've got to, we've even got to upgrade the influent line from where we left off on the 36 up to the headworks because that's in the same condition that yeah. the other line was, so. As long as we're thinking ahead, I, I would just as soon get another four or five million dollars while we're at it or whatever it that is and upgrade that line so that we're not sitting here as a council going sorry we can't we can't look at you our growth boundaries done it, it's coming faster than i think we're realizing yeah and and i that would be great if we tackled that at you know obviously it'd be a separate project but at the same at the same time where they were going to be sitting today had no clue okay but at the same time, it is twice as much as they asked for last year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. So, so quick question, though. I mean, that much of a change in the scope of it and the scope of the work, is that something It doesn't have to go back out to bid again? We're still good with the, the bids we have as the change. I mean, that was a – it was kind of – does that make sense? On board. Yeah, we've already got the contractor on board. Right. Um, so, so no, no changes are needed okay. there. Well, I just was asking the attorney back there to make sure that we weren't <laughs> opening a can of worms. So how far out? was explaining is that now that we got the contractor on board, we can try to order ahead or the contractor will order as much as we can. Right. Contemplating this. This is just for your information to get you guys to understand how you need to be. So, How far out are we, Dave, to being shovel ready financially? Construction, it sounds like, is going to be ready before we're ready financially. Well, we, we've been awarded $11.5 million from the state, and we're going back toward the end of this month to ask for more. And then we have to go out on the market to get the balance. And okay. I think we'll talk a little bit about financing, but um, all these projects, when, when the design's finished 100%, we, we can put that all out to bid. We do have a contractor on board to see what we can do there, but there, there's there's bid options all the way along, isn't is that correct? So, is this something we can pass on through uh, impact fees as well? Because this is definitely changed that. I, Travis perked right up when I said impact fees. No, I, I was going to just clarify. So we did not include this in the impact fee that we adopted in 2020 because we didn't have a price. Right now that we do we could actually update our impact fee, go back through the process and include this. So then all new development will pay, you know, obviously be a higher impact fee, but they'll also help pay. The sooner the better. And obviously in that impact fee, it would determine what percentage of this is due to growth and what percentage are we doing? Cause that's the part of the problem right now. That's why we're violating with the state right now is we don't have any redundancy. Right. Like if the air rotors go out, we're automatically violating and we can't do anything about it until we can get it fixed. And so that's part of the thing is we're trying to do redundancy. So if one part does break, which that does, because this runs 24 seven, then we can still meet our demand with the state and meet all our limits and still keep running while we fix that part that's broke, which we and don't that, have. And that we cannot charge for impact fees. The redundancy no, we have to that cover part the we cost can't, But with the impact fee, it would, it would clearly delineate, you know, like let's say out of this 55 million, 30% or 40, whatever that number ends up being is due to a growth. So then we could charge that proportionate share into the impact fee and divide that. In. So the $11 million we're getting from the state is to fund the redundancy. The other 44 million will be out of impact fees. That's very optimistic. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with Bob on uh, on the impact fees. We need that ASAP. No, 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 because I'm trying to make new growth pay for what we needed, right? If 
that's what you want to hear, I'll, I'll let you know that. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Brian? Yeah, so I'm with Bob on the impact fees. We need to do those ASAP because every house that comes in to get built right now, if we don't have those increased, that's money we're losing out on. Totally agree. Yeah. I'll get a proposal and I'll get going on that. Okay. Because so, I always say we don't budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the interest of time, we had a few pictures showing condition of existing um, systems out there, but I'm going to skip through those. Can you show us where? Can you show us where Jeff's bed is? <laughs> <laughs> When he has to stay out there and keep tapping the lines to keep it moving. <laughs> so uh, ending up here with financing and rate considerations. So uh, financing, one of the things that, that we want to do is uh, look at doing a 30 year loan. Uh, we did this with Salem, um, you know, generally just because um, if we can kind of reduce that impact of that first year when a payment is due and knock down the payments um, by doing a 30-year loan that helps us out with rates and then where we're a growing community we'll have excess in the future we can use that to either fund things in the future or pay down uh, the loan earlier if we'd like um, second thing is as, as dave mentioned we're trying to get as much funding as possible from dwq that's uh that's from the state um, they have pretty good terms and um, right now we have 11 and a half million. We're up for um, potentially anywhere from two to 10 million additional funds from them. Um, plus they're offering, uh, I think it's about 2 million in uh, principal forgiveness. So basically a grant for us. Impact fees, as we talked about, uh, my, my cursory look at the, what we could go up to is in about the $3,000 range. And that's just for the treatment portion. Uh, lastly, rates. So you see the table down there at the bottom and there's, there's four options over on the right side under the updated project numbers um, for two for a 20 year loan without and with impact fees included and one uh, or two there also for a 30 year again without and with impact fees so you can see um, what the base rate would need to be and then based on a five thousand dollar usage or five thousand gallon usage per month what the average monthly bill would be um, so you know, best case, if, we're, if we've increased our impact fees and we're figuring those as part of our budget um, and we're paying, uh, using those to pay down or make our payments, um, we'd be looking at $52.50 a month as an average monthly bill uh, compared to the current of $42.08. Um, so again, that this graphic shows a comparison of the the revenue here in the bars and the expenses in um, the lines and shaded areas. So again, if we can take our, our budget that we would need to pay off a 20 year loan and, and reduce that down by going to a 30 year loan, it really helps us out that first year when those first payments are due and our, you know, our numbers are the lowest in terms of our, our residents. Um, and then as time goes on, uh, revenue starts to, to jump up a bit above our expenses and we can use that excess to to fund um, early repayment. Um, lastly, just a comparison of, of where we sit in terms of, again, if we're looking at that 5,000 gallons um, per month residential connection, what would a rate be? And so we've, we've gone through and looked at the various uh, cities in the area. Right now we're in the green uh, with this bump up, we would be up here. Um, you know, I would say that that a lot of these you see down here are all going to be going up in time. Everybody's got to make changes. Everything's aging and, and needing to meet new limits. So they're all going to go up in time. As we discussed before, we're probably back about in the middle of the pack as, as that happens. Yep. So that's, that's our last slide that we have. Uh, any further questions that I can answer? Oh, I do have one more. That was the last slide until today. Um, so what's next? Um, we're looking at... Again, obtaining some additional funding from the state. We have a couple of meetings coming up with them and should know on the 26th um, what we are approved to, to gain from them. Uh, the second thing is we're, we're looking to close this state loan earlier. Normally we would close that um, when we are ready to start construction. With the, the new federal um, infrastructure acts, there are some requirements that um, 
we would rather not have for buy American um, things. And so the state is encouraging us to close that early and they'll just hold the money for us. Um, so we're, we're looking at kind of a, a quick thing here to, to get that done. Uh, but what that'll mean is there's some resolutions that we have uh, or that you'll have to adopt. One of those is a parameters, which just authorizes the city to, to uh, borrow up to a certain amount to fund the project. And the other one is that we'll have to, to lay down that new rate structure that we want to adopt. Um, and, and again, as you talked about on the, the PI rates, um, that can be something that be eased into. You know, we've got a while before that first payment is due, and so we can, can uh, bump those rates up over time. Uh, we'll need to, to finalize our, our full funding package, so getting that additional money for the project, um, doing that sometime in the summer. And then on, on our side, we really need to get more moving on our design um, we, we would like to be under some sort of construction this fall um, uh, because our deadline is really um, two years from this fall to get it done to meet the state um, deadline to meet the nutrient limits. And that is the last slide. That's that's fairly aggressive schedule. It's, it is fairly aggressive, yes. Is, is Alder confident that they can have the manpower? Are we confident that we can get the equipment uh, obviously, where we're set today, everybody looks at each other and goes, I don't know. Uh, uh, and these are the exact conversations we've had internally as well. And, and part of our strategy is to try to get those. So how's the, yeah, how's the homework on this? Do we, do we know what's available, what we, can, what we can tie up, what we can get coming? Um, we do to some degree, but at this point, we really need to select our equipment and try to get those purchases started so that okay. we get those things coming as soon as possible. So I, it's certainly something I, I, I think at. you'll find that this council will meet your time frames and parameters if you'll just get with us. Okay. Is that correct, council? Yes. We're, we're bringing some resolutions through, our, through, through Zion to Gilmore Bell in February okay. to start that process and to get the, the loan package closed with the state. And then we need to look at the at the market to see what we can close on for the others. But that if we close on the state, we'll have some money that we can start purchasing some of the things we need. And, sure, and, the and, and I know that interest is sitting out there waiting to, to be risen. We've, we've been told that it's gonna rise a few times this year. So it already has. I know, the sooner the better. Yeah, mortgage rates have already gone half a percent. Yep, half a percent already. That just eliminated a bunch of kids from buying a home. Yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping the state will give us the same interest rate we gave in Alaska. Okay. So that, that would be awesome at 1.1%. Thank you, guys. That was that was awesome. I mean, Thank it was mind-blowing, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Cool. We just wanted the council to be aware. We're, they're continuing to engineer. We're, we're working on getting financing, but um, there are some challenges we have to get through. Well, we definitely need it. We do. It's mandated by the state. We got to yeah. have these upgrades. That's why all these other sister cities are scrambling as well. And, and the engineering costs, and construction costs, everything's going up for everybody. Yeah, like uh, Tim can correct me if I'm wrong, but in the previous meeting, you know, construction workers, the average salary a couple of years ago was $23 an hour. Now it's 35 just to get people to work. So that everything's just gone spiral, you know. And so, you know, part of the problem too is we can't even get some of the equipment out of the existing building right now without tearing the roof off or cutting a door in. And so that's why some of this cost has gone up too that we didn't anticipate because there is no way to get equipment in or out of the buildings without doing some extra work. The new so buildings won't have that problem, right? That's that's the plan. So, you know, is to do is to design it so we can easily get stuff in and out when we need to instead of where we are right now. Is this like, I mean, does the new plan show gantry cranes and things where they're needed and stuff so that we're not? Yeah, that, because like I said, if we took you, some of you, some of you probably been out there, but if we took you into some of the rooms at the plant, it's dangerous for these guys to even get the pumps and stuff out because we have to kind of jury rig stuff, get it onto a pallet, then we got to get it over and, you know, anyone at any time could, it could fall on them. And so that's what we're trying to get us a system where it's easy for these guys to maintain it. <clears throat> Hate to pay for it, but one life's worth a lot of money too. Yep. yep. Okay, appreciate it. We'll uh, go you. back to the Thanks, Travis. agenda. Thanks, you guys.
Uh, number seven, resolution, uh, Utah Main Street program, Dave. Mayor and Council, we are looking at applying for some grant money for the Main Street program. The state of Utah is re-implementing their Main Street program. There's a, a grant that's due by the end of the month. We needed a resolution for that. We since have found out that uh, we ha hadn't didn't register last year, so we're not eligible for the grant. We still want the council to adopt this no, resolution so that when the next round of funding uh, comes out in, in the summer that we'll be ready to go and apply for some of the grant money. We're hoping to do some like matching grants and get the businesses to maybe spruce up their back sides. And it's a good thing to be part of, but uh, uh, we were hoping that we could get this and get an application in by the end of the month, but apparently we're not able to do that, but we'd still ask the council to approve the resolution so that we'll be ready for the next round. Okay. Any discussion on that? I've talked to Nan out of the uh, uh, governor's office, and she's excited about the vision that we have for downtown. It'll match exactly what, what they're trying to do. So she's excited for us to, to get registered. Okay. Uh, I need a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, resolution for the Utah Main Street program. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion been seconded. The roll call vote starting with Council Christensen. Aye. Council yes. Carter. Aye. Council Brosgard. Aye. Council Hyatt. Yes. And Council Hewlett. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, e, adjournment to redevelopment agency. I'll take a, a motion to adjourn to the redevelopment agency. So moved. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned to the uh, Redevelopment Agency. Uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, as directors, uh, accept a motion for a public hearing resolution. So amendments moved. amendments to the fiscal year 2021-22 RDA budget. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Have a motion been seconded. Uh, starting a uh, roll call vote starting with Council Hewlett. Director. Aye. Yeah, the Director Hewlett. <laughs> yes. Director Hyatt. Yes. Di right Director Proskard. Whoops, sorry. That's what he's doing right now. We did. Yes. Okay. Di Director Proskard. Aye. The Director Car uh, Carter. Aye. Director Christensen. Aye. Okay. May Mayor and Council, the. Let the me. Oh. I'll go ahead and do, do, do you want me to do the public hearing right now or just wait for you? I thought that was. Yeah, but I'll, I didn't need the, the. OK, go ahead. I won't read the directions till after you're done. The only no the problem. only option, the only item on the RDA is that item that we went over in the other budget is to uh, appropriate twelve thousand nine hundred from the RDA budget to to do the the trail along that front is just being developed. Yep. And so. We, we can have the public hearing on that part and that's all that we would need a motion on that. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, get, we can, we've already had the motion for the public hearing. So I'll just give directions, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, those that would like to address this, please step to the mic and state your name and speak clearly. Uh, limit your, your comments to three minutes or less uh, to agree or disagree with the previous comments. And, uh, St don't state new information, don't repeat. So uh, if anybody would like to address this online, do we have anybody? Yeah. Okay, then we'll go ahead and uh, accept a motion to uh, close public hearing. So moved. Seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. aye. We're out of the public hearing. Mayor, I, or, uh, Director, I would make a motion that we approve the amended 2000 fiscal 2021 2022 RDA budget in the amount of twelve thousand nine hundred dollars. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. Uh, uh, roll call vote. Director Christensen. Aye. Director Carter. Yes. Director Proskard. Aye. Director Hyatt. Yes. And Director Hewlett. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Mayor, Mayor, I got one comment on this. I, I think Dave and Jill, maybe you were in the discussion, we talked about getting some monument signs 
for the going into the business park. I think we ought to be working on that. Yeah, we'll probably try to put that in the new budget that's coming and uh, try to get those signs. That'd be great. Constructor, because yep. we have some funds in there to do that. That'd be great. That'd be in the RDA, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then uh, going to F. Uh, no, Mayor, I'm, yeah, Mayor, I make a motion that we adjourn from the redevelopment agency. I'll second that. Okay. Motion been seconded. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, go to G. Annual training, Jason. Well, uh, let me just ask a quick question. We can either do this tonight, if you'd like, or we can do this Saturday. It's up to you. It doesn't take very long, but if you'd rather go home. We're, we're trying to be sensitive to some time that, that Dave needs tonight. Yeah. So if, if we can get Saturday, we've, we we've got a couple minutes, we can hurry and get it done. I don't think it takes too long, but I might slip out before he's done. Yep. But I've been through the training with him. Okay. But whatever you want to do. If you want, we can wait till Saturday. I can present it. On Saturday, Saturday I planned way. on napping. Will this help me? Or... <laughs> this will help you nap. You're, you're here, go ahead and get it done. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jason. Oh, and just one other thing. We, we did put a full session to talk about the property. I think the mayor. I'd like to. to each of you. We don't have to go into that. Yep. Full session. Yep. Okay. Oh, in that case, if this is the last thing on the item. If we Let's get it done. Back. Get her done. Let's get her done. done. So, Jason, I have a question for you. If I've already done this twice this year from other places, can I? Can I... You can tune me out. <laughs> can we just get the cliff note version? Because we've all yeah. had it. We'll yep. do it. We've all had it. I know it's very redundant. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is. And you're not very exciting to listen to either. Oh, thanks. Uh, you, you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a negative way. It's just a <laughs> fact. It's just that your topics suck. There you go. Well, unfortunately, that's what attorneys do. I mean, we, we don't present things that are interesting. We present things that are, at the end of the day, horrible for most people. You just bore us into compliance. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Jason. Oh, no, you're fine. So if anybody wants to stand up, they may. Yeah. Okay. Is this an option? <laughs> I'll just start off. This is the Open Public Meetings Act. No real changes from the legislature last year. Um, the purpose is to act in an open meeting uh, and deliberate in an open meeting, meaning you guys just talk it through much like you did today, much like you do every, every week or every council meeting. Um, usually we don't have many issues with these kind of things. Uh, a meeting, of course, is just uh, any time there's uh, two or more together. Uh, the one exclusion would be your uh, planned movie on Friday night. Uh, of course, you won't be discussing any matters of the city, won't be voting on anything. You will simply be watching a movie. So that doesn't count as a meeting, but just about everything else. If you're discussing any city matters, those should be in a public meeting and should be allowed, the public should be allowed to attend. Our quorum for you guys is three members. Uh, if there's only three present, uh, excluding the mayor, then it must be unanimous on every vote or else it fails. Uh, notice that's usually done by uh, staff. Uh, Note that some public meetings do require 10 days, but most everything is 24 hours at least. Um, everything. No, oh, I'm not projecting it. I thought I was. No wonder they're looking at me like. <laughs> We're looking at you like, are you done yet? <laughs> No, I am not. <laughs> Jason, you know I love you. Thank goodness. No. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Okay. How do I share my share screen? He knows. Does he? He knows. It's over here, though. It's not part of the gym. It's over here. It's on my desktop. That's why it's only so way to make it over. That's right. Share screen. Yeah, one of my first phone calls. 
Okay. You're way ahead of me. Not always. That it's thing. it's not good when my mind gets time to think. I, I think too serious sometimes. So that's okay. Is he ready for a motion? <laughs> Do you want a motion? <laughs> Let me go back to the beginning of it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just showing it so that everybody knows what I was looking at. Okay, let's talk about a little bit about closed meetings. Uh, the only change that the legislature did last year, although I've heard rumors this year already, uh, the only change last year was that closed meetings, you couldn't make any motion before. Uh, the legislature clarified that and made it so that you could make a motion to close a closed meeting. That's it. I mean, uh, uh, there's three reasons. Character, confidence, and health of an individual or an employee pending or imminent litigation. You guys have gotten both of those in recent months. Uh, and then also uh, matters regarding sale or purchase of property. Uh, public body closes the meeting. You have to announce it, of course. There's strict rules. Just listen to us. That's all we ask. And we will tell you and we'll walk you right through it. Uh, Kim's really good about telling you on these, especially the motion She tells you exactly what to do. So you guys, if you just follow the paper, you'll get it. Uh, emergency meetings. Every once in a while, these may come up. 24-hour notice, and it has to be a majority of the... Uh, or a quorum has to vote to do it. Not required to have a 24 hour notice? No, it's not. Okay. And, but it, you do have to have a quorum to approve it, to uh, do the emergency meeting. Um, electronic meetings, we're okay with that. Um, the only change was that you have to have an anchor location. The anchor location would be here. Um, electronic message. This is something that I would just say, there's nothing against it. You know, text messages between yourselves, please don't do it during council meetings though. Um, there has been council meetings in the past with some, not here, but other council members in other cities that have been actively texting each other during the meeting, trying to get their idea about where they're voting or how they're voting on things. Please don't do that. <laughs> uh, penalties for this is, um, voidable uh, if you violate um, closed meeting violations is actually a crime. Okay, let me run you quickly through the Municipal Act, uh, Ethics Act. This is very important. I will just say this the top or the bottom line of this is err on the side of disclosure. If you're, you have any question about this, come see me or Dave, and we can walk you through it. Uh, but many of you probably are involved in things that, of course, I don't know about or uh, staff doesn't know about uh, that probably should be disclosed. So please let us know and we can walk you through what you need to do and how you need to do it to disclose it. Um, this is actual or potential conflicts. Um, of course, I, I've never seen this actually happen, but using the office to gain a benefit, um, this is a crime itself. Uh, if you do this, um, then you have committed a crime. Um, I would advise, if you ever have any questions about this stuff, please come see me. Um, gifts are okay as long as they're $50 or less. Recognition of uh, public service, a bona fide loan um, or a political uh, campaign contribution. Disclosure is required in all of these circumstances. Compensation for assistance in transaction involving the municipality. Um, that is public disclosure immediately before the discussion and finally with the mayor a sworn statement. 1306, interest in the business entity regulated by a municipality. That's a sworn statement filed by the mayor. The mayor then reports on that to the members of the body and may also provide a copy to them. Uh, of course, that doesn't apply for anything less than $2,000. And then 1307, interest in a business entity doing business with the municipality. That's an actual interest in the business. So you're a director or whatever. 
finally, the, this is that kind of the catch-all, personal interest or investment creating a conflict of interest with your duties. Uh, keep in mind, this can be any number of transactions or anything. If it, if it gives the sense of uh, that you're creating some sort of conflict or it's conflicting at all, or has the kind of vibe of a confl conflict, then it just needs to be disclosed. So like I said, see me if you have any questions about this. Um, there are a number of, this is, that 1308 is the big one. Uh, that would probably cover just about everything. Um, uh, what happens if you fail to disclose? Loss of position or job, uh, criminal penalties, or rescission of prohibited transaction. And I have seen that happen before. And that's all I have. Any questions? No. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. That's my job. So if you'll come see me, I can walk you through it. Okay. Have you made a motion? To adjourn. I'd like to make I'd like a motion. motion. I'd like to make a motion Good. that we adjourn. I'd like to second that motion. Can I third it? Yes, please do. <laughs> you got to turn it a uh, All in favor, say aye. 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 Good. Aye. <laughs> when are you coming, Teresa? Thank you. You don't that even want to hear what's better. been going on with me. Huh? You don't even want to hear what's been going on with me. I haven't heard. Why don't you call me and let uh, me know? I will do that tomorrow. And my wallet and my phone fell out. Good. Where's your wallet? It fell out on the chair and my phone just fell down on the floor. Can I borrow some money? I owe it.